Hello, you're welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayodeji Matsuluko and I'm a PhD candidate in Glasgow Caledonian University in Scotland. In this video, I'm going to be sharing questions that you can ask after your PhD interview. So this video is more or less the second part of a video I did a long time ago on how to prepare for a PhD interview. So in that video, I didn't touch on the last part of the PhD interview, which is where the supervisors actually ask you if you have any questions for them. So if you've not watched that video yet, you can follow this link and then watch that video and then come back to this video to find out what questions you should ask after your PhD interview or during your PhD interview. So let's get right into it. Now, when you have a PhD interview, you'll get to the point most likely where the supervisors will ask you if you have any questions for them or basically the interviewers, if it's not your supervisors that are interviewing you. So you want to make sure that you actually have questions for them. You don't want to get to that point and you're like, um, no, I don't think I have any questions. No, you should actually have questions because when you have questions, it shows that you have enthusiasm and it could more or less be the difference between them picking you and another student because when you ask a question, it shows that you've thought through what is important to you when you're going to a PhD program and it helps them also to see if you're a good fit for them. And remember, they're not just only interviewing you, you're actually interviewing them because you might have applied for different PhD programs and you're probably trying to find out which of them is best for you. So that gives you an opportunity to ask questions, pertinent questions that you have and find out what program is the best for you based on all the responses that you get from the different interviews. So I'll be sharing 10 questions that you can ask interviewers, supervisors during the PhD interview and why I think those questions are important to ask. So number one, if the PhD is funded, you want to find out from them, so what am I expected to do as part of my funding? Now it's very important to ask this question because some PhD programs, or should I say most PhD programs in, especially in North America, like when you are giving funding, you're expected to teach, you're expected to probably um, do research as a research assistant separate from your PhD, and that is where your stipend is coming from. Your tuition will be sorted, most likely, and then your stipend is coming from there. But in the UK, for example, or at least in my own university, the kind of funding that I have, so my funding covers tuition, and then I get a monthly stipend. I'm not required to actually do anything. So if I take on any other tasks like teaching, research assistantships, I get additional payments for that. So you want to clarify what does your funding require you to do? And it's not just about um, the responsibilities to teach or do additional research. It could also be different things that the program expects of their PhD students that once you're on this program and you're funded, this is what, uh, this is what and what you're supposed to do. As a PhD program, will never allow you to do any additional work because they believe that the stipend they pay you is enough. So you need to clarify that. The second question that you can ask, especially if they clarify that the funding does not require you to do teaching assistance, roles or to do a research assistant role is if there are teaching assistant and research assistant opportunities within the department within the university that you can do in addition to your PhD and then if there are paid opportunities in addition to that so you want to clarify that because you're not just thinking about okay what kind of additional funding you can get you're also thinking about your professional development so when you're doing research you also want to have opportunities especially if you have long-term goals in academia you want to make sure that you're able to get experience doing some teaching working on other projects so you just want to know if those opportunities exist and if the supervisors encourage students to take advantage of all those opportunities but the third question that you can ask is if there are opportunities for professional development within the department within the unit so by this i mean are there opportunities to attend trainings conferences seminars like do they have seminars within the uni within the research group within the department opportunities for you to develop your presentation skills opportunity for you to engage with different research groups different opportunities within the university opportunities for you to also do training in areas maybe where you have some gaps in your knowledge or in your skill so you want to find out what kind of opportunities they have so just ask the question and they'll be able to share oh maybe we do this training courses we have this seminar so you have to understand how rich the phd program is and it will meet your needs so you want to find out if those opportunities exist and especially for conferences and training you want to find out if they support financially for you to take advantage of those opportunities so if you need to attend a training that is um going to maybe maybe like a methodology training will the university department support you to go for that training and all of that so you just want to find out that and basically just find out the range of opportunities for professional development available the fourth question that you can ask is about if there are opportunities for you to publish during your PhD or another way to frame the question is are you required to publish during your PhD so there are different PhD programs and they have different structures so some PhD programs you are expected to publish nothing less than maybe three papers or basically a number of papers three to five before you complete your PhD and only then you'll be awarded your PhD when you've, so you've published papers or something your thesis. Some other PhD programs they're not really um, strict on or oh, you need to publish as long as you get your thesis done and then you can even publish after uh, but then also 
you might have opportunities to just publish if you want to even if it's not a major requirement or it's not a mandatory requirement so you want to find out what opportunities there are and why you want to find out is on one side if you are required to do that and publish you know that okay this is a program that they are very productive in publishing and this is what is required of me and if you know you're ready to go through that pressure more or less and stress to know that okay i need to do so so number of papers before i submit my page and i will not be able to submit my page if i not publish that so you want to know if that's how the program is structured and if you're comfortable with that on the other hand if they say oh you're not required to publish but it will be good to publish you want to find out how willing they are to support you in publishing your work during your phd after your phd because you want you don't want to be on the other end of the spectrum so the first part is oh they do publishing and you're required to do it is mandatory the other side is they don't even bother about publishing so you want to be in a research group in a lab where at least they encourage you to publish even if it's not a mandatory requirement such that even if it's just one or two papers you can publish before you finish your phd or even after and they can support you with so many things so supporting you also because like for example journal fees so publishing journal articles i mean you need funding for that so if they support that kind of opportunity that's the support funding so you just basically want to understand how, what support they have with respect to publishing your phd surely if I mean, because you need to be thinking even about your career post PhD, especially if you have long term goals in academia, you want to make sure that you're publishing something from your PhD because the importance of publishing really is not just even just about, oh, just publishing and saying, no, I've published. So it's a way of, first of all, of disseminating your work and showing the results that you have gotten. It's also a way of getting visibility and showing people that you are the person doing this kind of research in this area and also gradually breeding your profile as a researcher. So publishing is quite important to advance in your career and also to add to the knowledge and allow people to have access to your research. So it would be very great if you can gauge what kind of support they have for publishing and if it is mandatory. So the fifth question that you can ask is if you'll be part of a research group of the opportunities to partake in other projects, you know, within the university or even collaborate beyond your research group, beyond your lab. So um, the benefits of working within a research group is that um, you're able to learn about the research that other people are doing and you'll be part of something big. So most research groups have research themes and your supervisors might be under a particular theme. And basically being in the research group means that you learn how to early on collaborate and just understand research, broad research, know how your research fits within the broader theme of the research group or the kind of research that's being done. So research groups are important for maintaining a um, community, like having a community of research as a place, a safe space where you can share your work most research groups have seminars you know like weekly seminars or monthly seminars where you can share your work with your colleagues so you have researchers there postdocs you have other phd students so research groups are quite beneficial and it also helps you not to i mean a phd is a it can, it, a PhD can be a lonely journey and you'll be doing your research alone but if you have a, that research group it kind of helps you, kind of cushions a bit the loneliness and makes you you can bounce off ideas with people or just share your thoughts with people about research and all of that but basically a research group is good for raising your profile of your research you know when you're working within a research group people know that okay these are the researchers working on this area and you're able to have insights into other kinds of research that are similar to your research while also carrying out your own research. Another important question we can ask number six is how often are you expected to meet with your supervisor? Now meetings with your supervisors are very important because one thing you want to make sure is that you have support. So ideally you should have at least nothing less than maybe a meeting per month with your supervisor. So for example in my own university um, we're required to meet with our supervisors at least every month. And sometimes if you need to meet more than once a month, maybe every week, depending on which stage you are in the project, or it could be every two weeks. So, or sometimes when you start the PhD, it could be that early on, you have to meet weekly because they're trying to support you as you go along. But you want to ask, first of all, how often, you know, am I expected to meet with my supervisor? You just want to gauge what kind of support they have and what are their expectations because trust me you don't even want to be on the other end of the spectrum where your supervisor is like oh we don't need to meet often or maybe you're meeting once every two months so you just want to know what kind of support is available and the expectations with respect to meeting the seventh question that you can ask is about if you'll be required to do mandatory coursework or attend classes at the early stage of your phd so it's important to ask because PhD programs are structured differently and like I said especially in one of my videos where in the UK for example most universities are not required to do coursework but if you go to like North America or I mean elsewhere some other countries they're required to do coursework at the early stage of the PhD and it's only when they pass that coursework they can move to the next day so you just want to clarify what are the expectations starting out so that you can prepare yourself and know what is expected of you so they can more or less like spell it out to you that oh you need to do so so 
amount of coursework or pass this amount of coursework before you come up to the next day so that's just a good question to ask and it kind of helps you to prepare yourself the eighth question that you can ask is about um, postdoctoral opportunities within the university within departments or basically another way you can frame the question is so where are your former PhD students like what are the PhD alumni doing now so firstly that helps you know how much support the supervisors research group or the university basically as for PhD students that graduate from their university so how much support they have in terms of like guiding them and helping them to prepare them to be ready for you know post PhD careers whether that's within academia or beyond academia and the reason why you want to ask is if you get an idea of where people are people who have finished the program you be able to see and be able to gauge okay when I finish my PhD program this is most likely going to be my career progression obviously people are different and you're not going to do the exact same thing that other PhD students have done that gives you an idea of what the career progression is like and what people go on to do after their PhD and it kind of prepares you for the future basically so you want to know how much support they have and if you get a response like oh my God, we absolutely don't know what our alumni are doing now that could almost be like a red flag because it means they don't really care about your post phd life another question you could ask number nine is what is the expected timeline of phd completion why this question is important is because you want to clarify what their expectations are regarding when they expect you to finish your PhD. So like in the UK, for example, you're expected to do your PhD within three to four years. Sometimes there are allowances because research might not go as planned. So what you want to know is what are their expectations regarding that or if they really are not strict about that and they don't mind like PhD students going on for a number of years. But trust me, most, I mean, PhD supervisors really want their PhD students to finish in good time. But everyone understands that research does not always go as planned. What you want to ask is, you want to know how much importance they place on completion and timely completion and how willing they are to support their PhD students along the journey. Because the last thing you want is to be in a research group, probably with a supervisor who is not really concerned about your timeline and almost like it's like hands off completely. I mean, your PhD supervisors are not going to do your PhD project for you. In the beginning, they're more or less like holding your hands together, then by the midpoint, like they're holding you with one hand and then you know guiding you along the way and then towards the end they're really like allowing you to like you know, lead the show totally more or less so it's it's a journey of growth but basically you want to ensure that you want to gauge from their responses how much support they provide and what their expectations are concerning how soon PhD students will finish or basically what structure they have in place to ensure timely completion the last question i think you can ask number 10 is if you have a working space like your own office space or your own lab space so you just want to gauge what kind of support um is available with respect to allowing you to work effectively within the university within your department i just use my my university as an example most PhD students, if not all, have an office space, whether it's an open plan office or it's one office shared with a number of people, maybe two to three people. But everybody has that dedicated place to work. We have our equipment given to us, our laptop. So if you want to work from home, it's up to you, but at least you have that office space. Because what you don't want is to get into a PhD program and you don't even have any provisions for that. Because I don't know how widespread it is for PhD students to have working spaces throughout different programs, but I can imagine how tough it would be not to have any dedicated space and I think I've read an article about a PhD student who talked about not having any space to work and having to f try to struggle to find where to work and ending up in the library, going home and just wishing that they had that office space. So you want to clarify what kind of provisions are made for PhD students to ensure that they have dedicated spaces to work. And so those are 10 questions I think you can ask after the PhD interview when the PhD supervisors ask you if you have any questions. I hope you found the tips helpful and if you're a current PhD student or your PhD student who has finished and you have any additional questions that you think PhD students can ask, you can share in the comments below. And if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and turn on all post notifications so that you stay notified when I upload the next video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!